supporting marginalized youth uh, to do social action, to co contribute to the society, to <clears throat> uh, create the future uh, that they um, uh, create a future that um, they they dream of, and also that is valuable to others. And by doing so, by doing so, it also supports the community around them. And um, at the same time, I'm also an education reformer or activist. I have been participating in Taiwan's education reform and policy advocacy for around 10 years, uh, which includes uh, the <clears throat> and some of the uh, policies that I've been involved with mainly um, is the three acts of experimental education, which basically allows um, students, uh, parents, and educators to create the education um, that they want they they want to um, learn from, or basically whatever education project they want and being accredited as long as they pro submit a proposal for a democratic uh, review committee so they can opt out from national regulations. So, and this experimental education policy has been extended to a higher education uh, level, which means that alternative universities are now legally uh, possible in Taiwan. And at the same time, I'm also a researcher um, based on my actions, um, based, on, based on my actions in, in accompanying youth and also uh, policy reform. I've been researching um, what are the underlying challenges that um, education is actually contributing to the society as whole or civilization as a whole. And I have published uh, in some academic conferences and papers um, in terms of this systemic uh, relationships between education and our society. And so um, underlying all of my three roles, I would say that I'm also a complete complexity thinker that um, all of my actions and research are informed with a complexity mindset. Um, so I hope that in today's <clears throat> session, um, there were a lot of emergence uh, from our exchanges. And to be honest, that um, I'm also spontaneously assigned to this role um, only a week ago. So um, I'm also fresh to all of these people. Uh, as you may be. So I hope this freshness also will be <clears throat> um, refreshing to all of us. So first I would like to uh, invite uh, Tian and Yitin to say hi to everyone. They are the speakers of the day. And uh, we, we propose that we have the session to be run in two sections. One is with their presentations of their respective activities, their projects. Uh, and both of those are <clears throat> commu uh, youth supported communities to transform education. And um, after the presentation, we can have a free discussion. I will be moderating the discussion first, but of course, um, everyone are uh, welcome to raise your comments and questions. Um, so before I, be, before we jump into Tian, I, I wonder if there is anyone from from the audience who would like to raise any uh, suggestions or comments or any um, questions. Okay, so it seems like we don't have any. Hey, um, hi. Madhuri, did you want to say something? Okay, so let me let me introduce Tian. Um, so Tian is an entrepreneur, uneducator, financial advisor, social experiment conductor, and experiencer from Vietnam. Uh, he senses what emerges from a more beautiful world. He is the founder and co-founder of the Soil Project. It is an international alternative higher education and gap year program. And he also is 
the founder and co-founder of VCIL Community. It is a network and community of people who advocate paradigm shift, sustainable regenerative development through alternative non-traditional education and entrepreneurship. He also has, so he's uh, a slashy, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a popular concept um, among all of us, but basically he has so many projects. Starfish Community. Uh, Starfish Community advocates entrepreneurship, promote financial literacy, and also raise emotional intelligence with money for young people. So all of his efforts uh, are to learn and create enterprises and in, in reimagining education, tourism, economy, and business for a regenerative future. So let us welcome him. Thank you, Adda. Hello, everyone. And yeah, welcome to our session today. And so happy to be here with you. Um, so most, most of the session here, is, uh, I'm, I'm not prepared for it. Uh, I'm just like uh, speak spontaneously. And I hope that uh, we, we can have a, like, a very interactive discussion uh, on that. So <clears throat> my name is Tim. Uh, sorry, I get uh, COVID, so I need to be uh, cold. Um, so I'm not sure that you can hear me clearly. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I my name is Ting and I am from Vietnam. Uh, I, I I was started the journey of reimagining uh, higher education um, many years ago uh, since I graduated from high school. But I found that the mainstream university uh, they failed to provide me with the answer that I uh, searching for. Um, for example, when when I when when I very high school, I really looking for a place where can I answer the question like who am I, and how can I contribute to a beautiful work. And when I when when I was a kid, it come from my uh, my my experience. I a, I a child. I grew up in the countryside of Vietnam where I witnessed many people. They saw uh, many of my friends. Actually, my classmates they need to drop out to make a miss for their family because of the because of uh, poverty. So I really asked the question, what the poverty and how we can end the poverty. I I went to school. I I study in um, uh, business uh, economics, but uh, like I, I didn't satisfy with the the, the, the I, I didn't find any answer. Like in business, we, we just learn how to uh, get employment, how to get good salary, and uh, there there no answer there. So so I did report it, and I dropped out from uh, university. But I, I, I still believe out there, there's some, there, there some play for me. There's some play that can, can help me like, uh, find the answer. So I, I started looking for like on the university, on the world walk, alternative. At the time, I, I don't know anything about alternative university or uh, alternative uh, development. Uh, but but I, really, I, I really follow my, my colleague inside that I, I, I need to find uh, somewhere that, that, that best fits for me. And then uh, I find that there, there's some places in uh, it, in in the U um in in the Canada in the uh, US that they call uh, the alternative movement gap year program those kind of thing it's very interesting and then I apply to the program but it's very expensive that I can afford that so at that time I think I I, I realized that I cannot like depend on the outside for for my answer. So I need to fix my own initiative for my own education. So I decided to write my own university. So I told many people that I need to write my own university. So <coughs> my university need to be uh, local, affordable. No matter how much you can buy, you, need, you can go to and study with us. And uh, it needs to have the characteristic that I find in the alternative university uh, out there in the US, in the Canada. So I sit down and I research like about the philosophy, educational approach, uh, finance, everything in no uh, no model of uh, the the college and university in uh, in in the in alternative university in India in uh, in uh, Canada and in the US as well. And finally, I come up with my own model <laughs> of university. And um, and at the first year that I very like crazy, you know. Uh, so I taught many people, and many people called me crazy. You have never success. 
uh, I, I don't I don't I believe that education is not for commercial. So I want the one to take a lot of money from people. But I find friends who, who 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 want to like try try the the, the new educational approach with me. And um, yeah, there are many difficult. You know, when I started, they, I have no net um, no money, no network, not everything. I just really want to do it. So how do I do it? I think that I don't need to worry. I I don't need to be a building because education is not about the building. I don't need to like to 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 uh uh to hire experts because I don't have money to spy for them. But even when you hire experts and they only teaching without uh, like real work experience, it it it, it doesn't make sense. So what I'm doing is that I utilize I use the the uh, the, the the facility from all the university, from all the college, and from all the community. I use the public uh, side of the city for our education. And I connect with many like of the partner community, university in, uh, in, in, in the region in Southeast Asia. So I collaborate with them and I ask that whether I can, I can like bring my, my people to study with them so that we don't need to build infrastructure, but then we can utilize the public spy and the, the, the infrastructure of all the places. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we don't need to hire the experts because every time when we uh, want to meet the experts, I go directly to the people who, who I really think they have the real work experience. It's not about like the, the teacher only talk, talk, talk on the lecture hall. So, so I try to make my audition more affordable and uh, more like uh, real. It is it, it real. So uh, in, in the program, so um, <coughs> I am, um, uh, what, what, what is our focus is that for the young people, we need to understand about ourselves. So most of our education is about help create a spy for people to experience, to fail, to understand themselves. You know, the, the people, the student, the learner in my program, they fail a lot and they do crazy things. And I think it's a good way to, to, to learn. And um, we believe that our work in our classroom and our whole, whoever we meet in our teacher, so that we not limit ourselves in the four warm of the classroom, but we try to travel if uh, possible. And we do like many things we, we don't we, we don't apply to, to, to fail. Um, and most of uh, most of the most of the, what we do is we try to help people to have the chance to understand about themselves understand about the work around them. Uh, because when we put people in the mainstream university, usually they, they, they work with a very narrow, narrow. When you put uh, the student in the economic class uh, or a business class, like they only have interaction with the, um, with the student who share the same mindset of business. Or when, you put, uh, when they, they go to school and who, uh, who only care about the social issue, they only have uh, like knowledge about social issues, they don't care about uh, the finance or business. So we 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 we, we try to remove that uh, they, that narrowness by like uh, not put any limitation for our education uh, to for people to understand themselves, understand about the world, and then we try to teach them how to like uh, do the livelihood because most of our career path and our job right now is livelihood. We do thing to harm our people, how our planet. So we need to reimagine about the livelihood, about the career path, how and how we can like earn, uh, uh, survive and uh, do good for our people and our community. It's not like only like go to college, get a degree and then you work for co big corporation, get money, get rich, that's it. I, I don't like this myself. So it's really important that we know your entrepreneurship in internship inside the people because we only internship people can do uh help they dare to do the different things so so that but internship is not only about the knowledge about the skill set but about the mindset and the character i i am for because when we go to school we can learn about knowledge but education is not only about knowledge it's about our head hand and heart but so the question is that we use context by learning in context by learning, you can know the people, character, how to make them like, how to foster the, the risk taking, how, how, how to be creative in terms of utilize social resources, 
instead of saying, okay, I cannot do that, I cannot do it. Yeah, and that's why we first, uh, we put people to the boundary. We teach them internship by context by learning. And, by, and we can witness a lot of uh, rowing when we, when, when we uh, between the people. For example, I receive the people who, who are just graduated from high school and go to our program. And when we have uh, some like, uh, some, some, some compare with the people who, who stay in university, I can see the very difference between the character of them. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I have an experience. Uh, last time when I uh, am I bring people to the uh, um, to, to the dumb side and uh, this is the powerful of the context by learning when when they say that the dumb side uh, when and what possibility of uh, they, 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 they trust to away so when they come back they're not using uh, the plastic anymore uh, rather than we making them sitting in the classroom and talking with them about not follow the environment. So that's very like uh, softly about uh, what we do to reimagine uh, higher education. Thank you. Thanks, Ten. That was uh, very wonderful. Um, and also ending with the story of not polluting the environment from your small actions. Um, so <clears throat> next, um, let me introduce Yiting, a longtime friend of mine, and she is the co-founder of Dao Dao Learning Community, um, and also she is a democratic educator, uh, public relations um, expert, and also a volunteer in various ways, as she describes. Um, she describes herself as a speak seeker and practitioner of democratic life, and she keeps trying to play the role as the bridge between people, resources, and needs, and to create a de-schooling community to support people to achieve self-actualization by sharing. So I also shared her graduate thesis on collective intelligence and its application at her project, Dao Dao Learning Community. So if you're interested, you can read it. So Yiting, are you ready? Okay. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Um... I will share my keynote. So let me see. Oh, um, if I'm not in the world, so it can be on my phone. Sorry, um, the host. Um, can you, can you, can you me to, let me see. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, wait. Here is it. Okay. Um, actually, I'm not good at speaking and listening. Yeah, I'm better in English reading and writing. So I will try my best. So if you have any questions, you can uh, raise your hand and I can speak Chinese and Ever will help me to translate. Okay. Okay. Um, let me close this one. Okay. And today's sharing is about my. Um, practice and study during these two years. Um, I am a graduate student and I just graduated from a democratic college in, in the United States, which is called uh, Gallery College. And it's like an um, alternative college, or you can say it's a progressive education uh, college. And, and so my, uh, my pro final product is not like a really uh, academic, uh, thesis, but a uh, uh, project about knowing, being, and doing. And I want to share with you this final product. So, um, as Adler said, I am the co founder of a uh, Dao uh, Dao Learning Community. And uh, what is that? Is that we, uh, some students, educators, and parents, uh, and I, we use collective intelligence to create the community. And we want to invite learners to uh, work with, uh, uh, with us that can figure out what's the problem with democratic education and how can we uh, find some solution to promote it. So uh, for example, uh, we found that it's not easy to find a 
right resources, learning resources when we are doing self-learning. So we build a, a platform to invite everyone to share the uh, right or their the, uh, the resources that it, they think is, is good to use. So um, yeah, and that's where uh, uh, this, that, that is our first step. And what's our vision of this community? There's a video I can share with you. 在岛岛阿学，每个人都是一座拥有丰富资源的岛。透过互相互助学习，成为一片独立又连结的群岛。我们是岛岛阿学，岛岛哦，邀请你共编共享学习资源。Yeah, so um, what、well, um the first problem that we found is about the um uh the three um、uh, finding resources is not easy. So we we build a platform, and why we want to do that is start from Um, some questions from myself and my、uh, observation for Taiwan society. And first one is that I, I think I am proud of Taiwan's democracy. And a lot of people will、uh, say, "Oh, you、uh, Taiwan did a good job in the pandemic or something like that." But actually, I'm not.、Uh, I'm not crazy, or I'm not、uh, really. Pay、uh, attention to democracy in Taiwan, and I I just want to wonder why is that, and why I feel uh I, I why why I am a democratic educator, but I'm not not passionate with the democratic、uh, policy or society. That is the first question, and the other question is that、um, Taiwan is going to build the sense of ta- Taiwan community and. We want to make that.、Um, it's about that China and Taiwan. China always say we are family, or we are the、uh, we we have the same blood, or something. Blah blah blah. But Taiwan needs to have our own um uh identity. So we found that maybe um democrat democrat、uh, democracy or liberty will be our uh next um. Future to build our own、uh, identity, but actually, when we、uh, in this process, we found there's a lot of com- competition or confronting between like ages,、uh, youth and elders, or the parties. So it's very weird. So I want to find、um, how can we promote. Better、uh, democratic society. That is the other question. And about、uh, democratic education, is that Taiwan is a democratic society, but our education is not democratic in Taiwan. And the other question from myself is that I am, I have good grade. I had a good grade in school, and I am lucky enough to cope with the education system. But why I still want to trust in democratic education? Yeah, this is the other question that I still ask myself, and so、um, based on those questions, I start my final product in my graduate. Yeah, so、uh, the product is about democ- democracy and democratic education. Myself, Taiwan, and the world, and knowing, being, and doing. Yes, so.、Um, Uh, as I、um, as I say that Taiwan is going to build a Taiwanese community, but actually we need more、uh, sense of common good. Like I think、uh, the sense of common co- common good、uh, include the paternity and responsibility. Yes, and the other is that、uh, about the democratic education. For me,、uh, democratic education include two elements. First one is self-direct learning, and the other is a, a democratic community. But、um, actually,、uh, Taiwan have a lot of you can say、uh, a lot of、mm, rules or a lot of、um, policy that you cannot do self-direct learning. But people or others will direct your、uh, education educational. Goals or contents or ev-、uh, evaluation, something like that. So, but um, but it's another、um, good news is that 
uh, in Taiwan, our non-mainstream education, which is called uh, experimental education, is getting better and better. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, alternative school in Taiwan, and uh, I was one of the teacher in some famous alternative school in Taiwan, which <laughs> ever is is the graduation student in that school. Yeah, so but there still have some problem in our. Uh, experimental education. For example, we there's not every school that is uh, they. Um, how can I say that? We don't have the same um, concept of education. But but that that is good. But actually, some ex experimental education is not in a democratic way. They will still um, set up a. Um, syllabus for students to learn. So uh, so that's the reason that I, I still want to promote democratic education in Taiwan because it's not enough now. And I think um, education is very important in a society, especially democratic society. So so I, I uh, my, my team and I, we create the Learning community, which is called Dao 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 Asia in Chinese, and in Taiwanese is called Dao Dao O, which means that everyone can follow their path, and they don't need to compete with others. They can learn by their path or their their way. Yeah, we don't need to follow others' um, expectation or follow follow others' uh, needs. So. What we do is that we we want to build a learning community, which that learners can find the same educational resource anytime, anywhere. And we want to facilitate that senior and junior learners to learn together. We don't need to call each other teacher or students, but we are all learners. Yeah. And the other is that we want to build a community that everyone can participate to make the decision. Um. Um, for example, that Facebook always makes the rules by themselves, but we want to invite everyone to discuss about the rules about this platform or community. Yeah. So um, uh, we focus on the uh, element, two elements of the democratic education, which are self-direct learning and democratic community. And our first step is to build the learning resources database by invite everyone to co-edit. And what's our next step is that we will um, build a um, experimental education educators community, and we want to invite them um, to this community. We can um, do some um, activity about mental health or like uh, some uh, teaching skill or something like that, because we found there's a lot of uh, alternative educators or democratic educator, they, they are so overwhelming <laughs> when they deal with uh, student uh, life or because um, in alternative uh, environment, we always focus on the holistic, um, per, um, uh, holistic education that mental health and the knowledge is something that is all important so if we it's like a counseling when we need to counsel someone we we still need someone to counsel us so that's it and the other is that um, this is a new new type or a new job type so there's not always have enough job for those educators. So we want to um, invite them together and share their uh, job source, their uh, needs. And we can, maybe someone can find a job in this community, something like that. And students can find better educators in this community too. Yes. And the other is that we still, we still fight with our ghosts. So yeah, and the other, uh, the other thing about our democratic community is that our community is uh, open source community and um, the team members are from 
uh, 16 years old to maybe 14, 40 or 50 years old. And we are not only educators or students or parents. There's a lot of engineers or designers or PR or something there. We have various backgrounds, team members. And I think it's great because I don't believe that education should just happen in school. And the school should be have a, the right uh, various uh, resources, um, people or mentor or something like that. I think um, education is, school is, is happening in the society. Yeah, so that's it. And the other is that we use open source technology. So we will share our code or something with everyone. Yes, so, and this is our, this is our platform. And you, it's Chinese, sorry. So, but you can see there's a lot of area that you can find some resources. And yeah, yes. And this is the calendar because I found there's a lot of wonderful alternative education com, com, uh, activity that uh, is unknown because they don't have ability to promote themselves. So. Uh, I am a people who like to collect this news. So I want, I just put it in Google Calendar and share with everyone. Yeah, and this is about the map of alternative school in Taiwan. And if anyone want to find um, different choice for education, they can use this map. Yeah, and um, the other is that we have a Facebook group yeah, uh, we invite everyone to share the resources easy, easier. Yeah, so, and they can ask uh, some questions if they want some resources or some, they have some learning problem. Yes, yeah, and, and I think the um, democratic, uh, democratic community in our learning community is not only happened in the like Facebook group, but happens in our team, our team, dot all learning team or or organization, um, because I found that there's a lot of um, team members. They are in mainstream schools, and they just high school student, and they why they want to join us is because they use this platform, and they found wow, there's something. Some, uh, some project they can join and they can um, do something to to promote democratic education to and to change the education problems in Taiwan. So we have maybe five to ten students, high school students in our team, and and they also have some. Uh, self-direct learn, learning students in our team too. And the other is that um, there's some, I, I say that uh, uh, engineers or uh, designers, they join us and they say they, they didn't know that Taiwan has this kind of alternative school or this kind of um, uh, educational philosophy. And they are surprised and they, they found we are using different democratic community models and, and it can happen, it can be happened and it's not possible. So this is really touched for me because I think um, in our team, we, we have already to practice democratic education. Yeah, um, our team member uh, are all volunteers. We don't have any pay and we have 60 uh, volunteers now, but, but the problem is not easy to <laughs> run a volunteer uh, organization. So that will be our next difficulty we need to figure out. Yes, yeah. And yeah, welcome to follow us. This is our website and fan page. Thank you so much for listening. I, yeah, I can. Stop sharing. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> so thank you, Yi Ting. Thank you, Tian. Thanks for both brilliant presentations. 
Uh, but Chem is actually here, the, our third presenter, but he told me that his, unfortunately, his internet is not very stable, so he is not able to present, but we'll see if he can join our discussion. So um, in terms of the following discussion, I would like to propose, based on uh, some common themes that Tian and Yiting and also Ba Chen shares. I like to raise four themes for us to freely discuss. Of course, I'll invite I, Tian and Yiting to respond, um, but also, we, I will also like to have others' contributions to these open-ended questions, or maybe you can build upon that. So um, the four questions are, uh, the four themes uh, first is about community building, and the second theme is about uh, the individual and community. And the third, which is a contribution from Bechem, uh, is about colonialism because it's a huge focus of his. And the fourth is about finan finances, uh, which is a common challenge of all uh, the more ideal, uh, whatever, whether it's education or other sustainable uh, endeavors. So, um, so in terms of community building, I would like to first start with this question that um, what, what are the key elements of uh, successful community building for your purposes? Um, and if there's any experience that you'd like to share. So maybe we can, uh, so Yiting, are you, would you like to share first uh, by raising your no, hand? No, no, I just found out Benchen is here now, so. Yes, he, he is here, but his, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, his, okay internet is not stable so oh, okay, so, okay. so i can I ask him that. but maybe he cannot answer we will see so uh i like to start from asking tian and eating but uh if anyone would like to add uh, build upon or maybe comment on the same open-ended question because i believe many of you are also experienced in your fields uh, so we can have we can have a more um participatory exchange yeah, sure. So, uh, Tian, would you like to go first? Like your recipe for <laughs> recipe for community building, or if you haven't found a recipe, uh, maybe share some experience on that journey. Can 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 you repeat your question? Yeah. So, so this is actually a question um, from eating. So we we did some question collecting beforehand, yeah, yeah. Um, and. We would like to know that um, what are uh, from eating. She asked that uh, what what are the key elements for building your ideal community. Yes, and I and I rephrase it a little bit. Well, I I like like for me like to building and uh, community nowadays we. Um, we, we need to like not only have a uh, um, uh, similar common uh, uh like similar vision, but we need to like make everything into a like, concrete uh, plan and we need to like uh, do it all together. <laughs> and I think that to be a community, I, I don't know about you, but I work from my own experience, I think conflict is very necessary on like building a community. You, you can add, uh, add in everyone, we can have a discussion like for, for me, like um, conflict and uh, resolve the conflict and everything like that is the important element of building a community. You know, I, I, I don't like to say a community everything that is very nice and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, because like inside each of our or inside each of the, the community, they only something that in conflict with each other. Uh, so we need to uh, to know how to to resolve the conflict, how to uh, make it happen, and how to uh, resolve it to have a deeper connection, a deeper understanding of uh, that. Because from my experience, when I first started, what I'm doing right now, I have like even the conflict between ourselves and the conflict with uh, like interpersonal with each other, and uh, which is the more we go out of conflict. So the more we grow and the more the deeper the, the deeper the connection that we form from each other. Uh, yeah, sometimes we 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 scare of the okay, like the conflict or the negative work, but I think everything like challenging, difficult, conflict is very necessary for the growth. 
So for me, it, the, the, the public, public in the world probably in my mind would you know, uh, have to be a sustainable or uh, 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 important element of the community. Because when we fight complex, we see different side of this uh, eight person, eight people uh, in, in our community. And when we can accept every side of that, and we can see we can accept, we love it, we appreciate it unconditionally, so we can have a last long uh, success. Beautiful. So basically, you, you, you said that um, we should, uh, from your experience, embracing conflict in a positive way uh, will actually bring the more vulnerable or deeper uh, deeper of ourselves, deeper things of ourselves. Um, all right, eating, what is your what is your response to this? What is okay. your recipe? Um, um, at first, I think that I want to say first is that we are a volunteer uh, group. So there will be a little bit different um, between like 10th organization or something there. Yeah. And I think the Eastern, um, the elements for building a, uh, a community is that we need to make this community is independent, but also interconnected. Because that, um, I think, I think that in Taiwan, a lot of people like to say we are a community or something that they, they, they are not start from that they respect you are individual or something that like that. But we, we need to respect that everyone has their own possibility, have their talents and they can be themselves. And after you respect them, they will, they will feel that um, better to communicate and connect with you. And that is the possibility that you can build a community and to make the connection possible. And, and the other is that I think community is important that everyone needs some um, sense of belonging. Oh yeah, belonging, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, but they need to feel uh, safety in this group by respect. And then, okay, yeah, so, yeah. And the second one is that I, I think community need to uh, have a lot of possibility. And how can we make the possibility happen? It, I think it's important to make this group have like uh, cross uh, disciplines or cross generation. And because everyone ha have their background so they can have more discussion or some interesting happens in this group. So uh, when interesting project happen, they can find their position or their role in this community and they can do something. And after that, they will feel some um, uh, self-achievement in, in their life. Yeah. And I think the, the, the next one is, it must be a chill or fun community. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's so important in this generation. I don't know why, but but I needed that. I needed to. If this project is not fun enough, they they cannot <laughs> go through the, the the difficulties. And uh, I and for myself, the other is when you need to build a community, you need to find the reason that you why you want to do that. What's, what's your life experience bring you to this action? Because if you don't figure out that when you do a lot of uh, community things and need to communicate with others, you will be more uh, confused or, or when uh, there's a lot of difficulties that you need to face, you will don't have enough power to face it, face it. And, I, and the other is that uh, I say that we want to build a inter independent and interconnected community. So sometimes my partner will say, oh, sorry, I'm too busy or overwhelming my life. So I cannot do some tasks or something like that. So 
um, because I'm a little bit like the leader of this community, so I will say, oh, it's okay. Um, it's it's great to figure out yeah, that you have difficulty and you say that, so I will support you. But if you don't have power to support those situations, you will very overwhelming. Yeah, that that's that's my experience before. So, but um, in my graduate uh, studies, uh, I join some consulting uh, uh, group or, and I study a lot of uh, uh, like psych psychology or educational philosophy. I, I feel my, I found why I want to do that. Yeah. So, and I think um, social innovation is not only about society, but, uh, uh, but it's very, have a lot of, um, it's relative with your life experience, and that is important. That will be the the inner um, uh, uh, in, inner. In uh, in, motivation. Inner motivation. motivation for for you to do all the things. Yeah, that's my that's my sharing. Yeah. So from eating sharing and also kin sharing, uh, I hear a common thread is diversity and also the, um, the capacity to support and sustain capacity, whether it's purpose, whether it's embracing conflict, whether it's uh, the capacity to support people during their vulnerable times, which I believe is also very relevant to the comp conflict um, aspect that Kian mentioned. So Gab Gabriela, you would like to also share your thoughts. For sure, thank you so much. I completely agree with meeting that coherence about what you are and what you're doing is the glue of the community for my experiences is the most important glue for it happens. Uh, I am founder and a co-creator educator at Design of Life Ecoversity in Brazil. Uh, it, it, it's also a self-directed learning for design, uh, all kind of life, you're starting by uh, yourself. Uh, it's an uh, application of the design concept by the system like a complex and worldwide view and based on deep ecology and interbeing concepts. Uh, and, and we, we are also an open source technology and we work in collaboration of, for the design of regenerative culture, cultures of the local communities where the youth, the, the young people live in Brazil. Uh, from the perspective about the life projects of each young people. So uh, I really, we are young, we have three years old, like a community, uh, but uh, based on our experience, uh, the, the most important ingredient for we, we stood by a community, uh, it's the self-directed self learn process, because part uh, about the perspective that uh, what I, the educators are offering for this community, it's a gift. The educators offer a several kind of uh, knowings. It's a uh, fair of exchange knowings. In fact, uh, we offer these knowings, and the young people we show what kind of knowing is important to my life now. And uh, each one young will uh, build on their own path of learning about what I need and what I want to learn. Uh, and, and, and this for me is most important because I, I, I can, Gabriela, have a good idea that I, I, I have a learned that I think is awesome, but it's kind of been not so awesome for that youth in that condition. Uh, so I think this, this, this self-directed learning is happening in a good space of affection. So the, uh, I think the, the most important ingredient above this self-directed self learning and coherency about what we are doing and talking, uh, it's, uh, I think our revolution is affective. <laughs> yeah, okay, if it, it have love and, and can embrace diversity, 
we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriella. Uh, Bacham, are you able to, is your connection stable enough to share, any, share your thoughts? Awesome. So why don't you say something? Right now we're discussing uh, your, your recipe or favorite ingredients <clears throat> of building a uh, purposeful community. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you all for being here. Um, building a, a sustainable community, I think one of the, the most important ingredients to is um, you know, in, integrity. Integrity is a very, very um, vital aspect because it, when people do the right thing, when no other person is watching them, I think it will build some sort of credibility and trust among the people. And that, that's why I always encourage people to, to, to teach each other to, to be more open-minded and uh oh are you still here <laughs> so it seems like the internet is not having good in integrity <laughs> and that um <clears throat> okay so um maybe but when bachem ha the, the internet becomes more stable we'll invite him again um, but building upon, so building upon the issue of community, I think it's also, um, I also like to uh, invite everyone to discuss, um, probably, maybe it's more philosophical, but um, like the relationship between the individual and the community. Uh, and so uh, I believe that most of, most of us, uh, whether in alternative education or, or whether everyone's doing ecoversities, we, we hear, whether we hear or in, implied by self-directed learning, um, this paradigm or these paradigms have generally a stronger emphasis on the personalized experience or the individual uh, or autonomy, basically the self. But at the same time, like today as Yiting and also Tian and also Gabriela uh, mentioned, that community is also a is also a huge ele element or emphasis of their projects, um, or like key ingredients uh, to the very, very success or foundation of their education initiatives. So I wonder. Uh, there's actually a book, I think, a classic book called Individualism and Collectivism, something like that. Uh, so when you um, in such paradigm that it, that um, emphasis is self-directed learning, which implies more personalization. How do you make that balance between um, the the bigger whole, or like uh, the bigger whole, maybe the the human community, or maybe even the non-human uh, greater uh, greater whole, and also the individual. Um, would anyone like, like to uh, <laughs> respond to this question first? Tian, do you have any thoughts or anything? I can. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I have an idea. That's because uh, we need to end this in uh, in a few minutes, right? After how, how, how long do we need to have? I think, I think we can. Uh, we, we only we have can... one hour for our session. Oh, really? I, I thought we have 90 minutes. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> OK. But I think in, in our email it says it is the just to just to check is the next session starting like in two minutes or or in thirty minutes. No, no, no. We we need to end before the session starts so, so other can join. But I, I just to put into like our one is so that we can okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 So maybe we, yeah, maybe we end in 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it like like I, I would like to hear like anyone talking. So I, I, I find it a little bit monologue like when, when three of us and we uh, go gorilla only like uh, talking. So anyone of you who have anything to share or question or anything that we can discuss to, to, to make this our session more like good fun. Is that okay, Adda? Oh yes, of course. Um, so, 
um, are you are you basically <laughs> passing the patent to <laughs> someone else <laughs> <laughs> instead of <laughs> responding directly? Okay, should I should I thought? Mel, oh. so so you um, unmuted. I reckon we should just all unmute. All unmute. <laughs> yeah. All on mute because yeah, that's sure, the first sure. step. Yeah, it's the first mute. step, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's just the first step. Yeah. Then, yeah. then you speak naturally whenever you feel the impulse to speak <laughs> rather than going, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's a, I just thought it was a really big, it was a, you know, it's a big, it's a complex question that you've just posed. And, um, yeah, I think it's a I, very long question since you met. <laughs> maybe yes. I just, I chuck in ref, reflection because that's just like an easy way of including the person, the individual. Yeah. That's one process. <laughs> and, I think, and I think the patient could be the key because in a self-learning path, uh, you can, we, we must have to look at the social and economic condition about that use and maybe, uh, we are training to understand that uh, uh, a university it's about four and five years, and maybe it could be more ten. Okay, and in this uh, process of self learning, maybe some youth here in Brazil, in a, in a lower social condition, need to do a small uh, path of self learning in the university because they need the 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 uh, they they need these for for these this stamp for uh, for give a job for for give a better life and better life in the in the in the base of pyramid uh, and better life to do something that eat to live to okay and so I think if you could uh, look at the self directed learning with patient and and what is possible for this community could be a, a, a way to look at it. Yeah, I think it's a big challenge for us who is a facilitator of the community or a builder of community because it's two aspects. It's, it's aspect of uh, who are in the community and who are developing the community behind. And uh, as Eileen uh, bring it to us, we should be resilient to understand these two aspects. In Brazil, uh, we have a lower conditions. So the people, they go for the formal university to have this mm. stamp and they find a normal job. But mm. more and more, I think we are aware to develop self and develop self-develop knowledge with social technologies like dragon dreaming and sociocracy to organize ourselves and be in the world and uh, make exchange and try to change that base of the pyramid because the younger people, they can really lead us to another way to look at education, new frame of education. So mm -hmm. I think it is a very good point, Gabriella. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Anyone else would like to add anything in terms of like striking this balance? <laughs> this long, uh, long-term challenge since humanity? I think my answer is that I just mentioned is that we have to respect every individual first. And then after the respect, um, they will feel some, some people support them and the support is, from others is, is important. So maybe they can have uh, their ability to support others and that community can be built. Um yeah, so is my answer. And the other is when I was in a uh, alternative school, and uh, when people when students do self-direct learning, that is not means that they do by their own, but they will um do the learning with other teachers uh, or students or maybe parents. So they will feel that feel that if they want to do something community can help them to build that, to achieve the dream or do something they want. So I think to make uh, people to feel that community is not to make you, to, to step you, but to help you. <laughs> and by some project, the, I think it's important. 
yeah, in our school or in data learning community. Yeah. Okay. Ken, would you like to share anything? I like, <laughs> sorry, no, no, not now. <laughs> okay, okay. I will, I will, so I, so I, 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 I personally, I personally do have some thoughts about this and mm -hmm. I, uh, <laughs> um, and um, as I mentioned at the beginning that I do, I, um, in, in terms of my ed educational, uh, previous educational activities in supporting marginalized youth and also that become an action research uh, to my, my later research projects. Um, that I, I think um, there, there is a approach that might be able to resolve this issue, which I call learn, learn by caring, which I think um, this oh. concept it, it itself is, is very uh, self, self evident. Um, mm -hmm. And um, of course I can go, go very long uh, about that because I've done recent research on that, but I think um, the previous paradigms in our education, I'll, I'll keep it short, that previous par paradigms of education, we can, um, you, um, I think, um, <clears throat> if we, <clears throat> I think it could be simply uh, uh, put into two paradigms. One is uh, learning, learn by reasoning, which uh, resembles or uh, represents a more classical or the more um, like class classical Greek, uh, Greek or classical uh, re Renaissance ideal of education. Um, however, it usually historically and also sociolog sociologically, um, it is uh, hugely reserved by uh, a more privileged class. And <clears throat> learning by do doing, of course, proposed by Dewey, uh, it has many high ideals, but in in reality, it's typically tied to vocational learning. And both of these learnings um, in themselves, uh, they they do not entail <clears throat> otherness. Uh, mm. These concepts in themselves do not entail otherness, but learning by caring it it entails necessarily uh, the other. And by learning learning by caring uh, through my previous action research mm. with marginalized youth, that when you, when you care others and you strive to achieve uh, that sense of caring, maybe you care the cats um, around you, or maybe uh, you care about uh, the poor neighbor, or maybe uh, some people on the street, or uh, whoever that you care, or whatever you care. You you actually you then you sense there is a gap, uh, whether in your knowledge or in your action, that you have to you have to uh, bridge. So then <clears throat> there is this learning, whether in terms of uh, emotions, in terms of um, uh, emotion or cognition and, <clears throat> uh, and also skills. <clears throat> and when, when that, uh, that striving for caring um, happens, um, it will initiate a feedback process, which the, <clears throat> the people, the stakeholders of your caring will um, almost necessarily respond to your action. So then that feedback process can initiate a, <clears throat> a feedback or re reciprocity of resource, which generally mm. in the traditional paradigm, the educational resources are allocated uh, by institutions. And if you don't enter some institution or rely on mm -hmm. some kind of institutional um, regulation, you you won't get those you won't get those resources. However, when you learn mm -hmm. by caring, uh, that initiates the regeneration or feedback loop or feedback loops of resources. Yeah, so that's kind of like the basic concept of learning by caring, and it also I think I found it a uh, very um, um, relevant and resembles a lot of uh, classical Chinese philosophy, um, especially in terms of Confucianism, which most people misunderstand it as a very hierarchical um, doctrine. Uh, however, in in the original Confucius uh, analytics analects, um, the the core of it is actually 
um, how do you how do you love others while being sincere? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that's my short, short, short comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, we have around like maybe one, two minutes at last. Uh, does anyone like? Uh, does anyone want to comment or add anything at last? I see people are sharing their um, their social media links. Hmm. in our chat yeah chat and they're waiting for you Adler. oh okay yeah. <laughs> I put Adler, link. i can help you <laughs> I, okay i put all the informations in the boarding i share in the beginning mm -hmm. so i hope you also can hmm. That you, that right. What you just shared that just then, do we have time? I was like, yeah, oh, sure, sure, throw sure. in. Um, well, what you shared just then, um, learning by caring. Um, well, it it just it just kind of tied back into that other question that you had around um, how do you balance kind of thinking about the bigger picture and yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and um, and working with individuals. And it brought up an experience of mine where. Um, where I was living in an area where I was, um, where I I could really um, some physically and emotionally um, sense the separation between you know between I and the other, which which happened to be Indigenous Australians, and um, and so then yeah, it it sparked that journey where I just you know. Um, went on a learning journey, I guess. Um, and, and it didn't, it, it, for the, for the entirety of that journey, um, it was both, it felt like both, it felt like I was addressing the greater issue of, um, racism, decolonization, the need for decolonization, but at, at the very heart of it, um, it was a healing process for myself. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I relate that to that a lot. That um, also because I think um, the development of the concept of learning by caring, it also um, arise from my experience in alternative education because I'm I, I personally. Uh, throughout my most of my schooling, I, I I study in alternative education democratic school, and through my participation in education reform, I also see uh, that um, some some people in the alternative education movement or um, education reform th there is su such a uh, huge focus on personalization, but uh, which loses connection with others. You know, very individualized, mm -hmm. but also um, siloed in some ways. Yeah, and and the learning activities um, may be more tailored to uh, to fulfilling individual needs, but um, but it it loses the connection with others. Yeah, basically, and I, I think that is that happens in Taiwan and also. Uh, through my field experience in Korea, in Japan, China, Hong Kong, uh, America. I think not all of the alternative education initiatives or programs are like that, but some, uh, it's, it's, shared, it's shared among some, some of these projects or programs. Yeah, so I think we are running out of time. <laughs> of course, there's always things to exchange and share. So uh, maybe, one last um, comment sharing or anything before we leave. I want to thank yeah. you for uh, yeah. everyone present here. Yeah, your discussion is very beautiful. And uh, mm. I enjoy being here with all of you. Thank you for your coming and discussing. Mm. Yes. Mm. I wonder if I yeah, I <laughs> Ella said, "You, uh, Ella invited me to 
do this presentation. Yeah, at first I, I I'm too nervous. I don't want to. <laughs> please. But she said, don't be nervous. There's a chill community. You don't need to be so nervous. And I yeah. feel that so so I can be. It's easier for me to speak English in a chill chill environment. So thank you, everyone. You made that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, I also really appreciate everyone's contributions and uh, that free spirit um, and loving, uh, loving atmosphere. So mm. thank you all and hope to see you all in other sessions and um, afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. I wish. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.